Wow, just about every detail about Overwatch 2 has been leaked thus far, I believe. The internet is bursting with Overwatch 2 information. We've got a lot to cover, leaked images, more claims made by Metro, the guy just keeps tweeting, more and more stuff. And on top of that, Slasher, the guy who leaked Roll Q a long time before it came out, has written an article for ESPN detailing more specifics about Overwatch 2's announcement at BlizzCon. Okay, I start at the beginning. Last night, I saw Nary tweet out this image of Overwatch Overwatch 2 with a new logo and Tracer looking very detailed, but also off. My knee-jerk reaction was there's no way this is real, even though it looks high quality, because if you look closely, there's errors in the image itself and the text, and the Tracer image looks like it's either a brand new engine or much more detailed graphics than what we're used to, but in my opinion, in an almost too realistic way. Overwatch is supposed to be a very bright and Disney-esque aesthetic game, but the sequel might take on a more realistic take. And I don't think players would complain if the graphics of the game got an upgrade, but it also makes me question if the game is going to come out on the next generation consoles that a lot of information has been leaking about, or what other fundamental changes have they made to the game. Another source that seems to be confirming the Overwatch 2 new logo is legit is this Coca-Cola ad that seems to spoil Overwatch character themed cans and as well we see the logo with the two next to it that logo starts to look kind of legit, but the rest of this I was still a little bit questionable on until earlier today, Slasher himself wrote a article for ESPN detailing that, yes, that indeed is the logo, the two offset from the logo we know and love, and since this point, more and more images have been leaked. Now, in this article, Slasher drops some serious bombshells, confirms that that is indeed the Overwatch 2 logo, confirms some of the earlier Metro leaks, but expands on them, saying that the Overwatch 2 PVE will be a four-player story experience with the first mission available at BlizzCon will be set in Rio de Janeiro alongside the hero talents for that mode that we already knew about. He says the BlizzCon announcement will mostly be set on the Overwatch story and narrative elements, but we'll finally be getting a new game mode named Push on a new map set in Toronto. And I believe if you're from there, you pronounce it Toronto. I'd say it's safe to expect Push to either be a mutual payload where both teams have to fight to push it back and forth like a tug of war game mode. But what I'd be more excited for is a payload race game mode, which gives you two separate payloads to push. It was a mode that was in TF2 along with all the other modes Overwatch has, and it would finally give us a mode that has more than one singular objective. If it was a mutually shared objective, you can expect a lot of stalemating and probably need some complex rules on how it works out. Splatoon 2 actually has a pretty good mode like this, side tangent, but it works out pretty well in that game. But interestingly enough, there still seems to be not full agreement on whether the sequel is only a standalone PvE experience or if it's bringing along all of the 6v6 multiplayer we know and love along with it, moving the game over. We'll talk more on that in a moment, but Slasher also leaked that Hero 32 will in fact be Echo, who was announced at BlizzCon last year, but based on follow-up tweets from Slasher and Metro, it's not yet certain if she's going to come out in Overwatch 1 or Overwatch 2 or when she'll come out at all, because there was supposed to be no new hero at BlizzCon, but now we're finding out that there will be a hero announced, but we're not really sure what context it'll be in. Metro now seems to believe that they are going to be transferring over all of the Overwatch 1 stuff into Overwatch 2 and leaving Overwatch 1 to be a dead game. I do not think this is going to be the case. If I had to guess, I'd say Echo will be announced at BlizzCon who knows when released, but coming to Overwatch 1 and the content schedule of Overwatch 1 will continue to develop as we've expected at a reasonable pace and perhaps even get updated more frequently now that Overwatch 2 is finally finished. A lot of times with either balance updates or new features for Overwatch 1, we frequently had to ask why are they taking so long to do some of the things that the community expects them to, well, first the Overwatch League took up a ton of their time, then I think they moved on to making Overwatch 2, and now with both of those set in motion, finally maybe we can get some attention to the main multiplayer game. And I'd expect it to be reasonable for there to be an entirely separate launch schedule and update schedule to the Overwatch 2 game. They can write entirely new rules for that and treat it like a completely separate experience. Like for example, in Diablo, you don't expect to get new characters constantly added to the game when there's an expansion, yes. Because Overwatch 2 
is more PvE focused. Content for that game may be updated more slowly as it's more of a casual experience than the hardcore competitive multiplayer that I think will remain in Overwatch 1. Excuse my side tangents because there's actually more leaks to talk about as well. In the midst of all of this, Metro claims that Overwatch 1 is going to go free to play, a move that many people have predicted for a long time and really going out on an edge. But he says that either this will be announced at BlizzCon or perhaps in sync with the Overwatch 2 launch. He follows up that this type of move has happened before where Destiny 2 went free to play when it moved to Steam and they kept adding to the game further content that you did have to pay for, but the base game largely was free. Now, now, being a Switch player myself, I also agree that that would kind of be a little bit of a kick in the teeth to just months after buying the product for it to go free, but at the same time, having more players on all platforms is a good thing for all players anyway, so I can't complain too much. The last leak were some further images that we're going to take a closer look at. Here's Sojourn in her Banff glory and what appears to be a bit of a preview intro briefing, likely prior to one of the story missions you embark on. A lot of this looks pretty rough, and I think that's because this is actually internal images before the game was ready to be shown to the public. For all we know, this was an image from a year ago or something that finally got surfaced and i expect the actual game of course to look a lot better than this but this image is quite interesting showing a talent tree which is right up blizzard's alley with the rpg elements this would be for the pve missions that allows you to upgrade your character in various ways some of these sound really fun actually i'm not gonna lie here we got tracer level one adaptive reload where your pistols reload when using any ability so this turns your blinks into mccree rolls which really will let you lay down some fire the second one is hindsight recall causes damage to all recently damaged enemies the next line level 10 is flash blink through enemies damages them chain reaction chains the damage that your pulse bomb does metro leaked this one as well in the past level 20 vortex enemies are pulled towards the point of recall and snared and the last one speed kills killing blows speed up your cooldowns so all of this i think would make pve pretty fun whereas the archives missions is probably the best facsimile that we have to compare to and by being able to increase your hero power as you level up over time more complex interactions can happen from the enemies as well to scale up with the power that you have and allow you to do more interesting things i'm actually really excited for overwatch 2 right now because as many frustrations as i have with the competitive side of overwatch 1 this type of gameplay design blizzard really knows how to do a competitive shooter completely out of left field for blizzard but these rpg mechanics is their bread and butter so i actually think Overwatch 2 has a chance to be a bigger game than Overwatch 1. I don't know about you, but for me, this has kind of been information overload. So let's recap and evaluate all things going on with Overwatch 1 and Overwatch 2. Because as hyped as I am for Overwatch 2, I think Blizzard really knows how to make casually fun games now. I also want to step back and take a look at the ramifications for the Overwatch 1 game that still needs some improvements. Let's lay out everything we know from the old Metro leaks to the new Metro leaks, Slasher adding on to things, at BlizzCon, we should hear about Overwatch 2, four-player PvE, Left 4 Dead style, story missions with lore finally, this time likely to heavily feature Lucio, and with that, they're finally adding some RPG mechanics to give you a sense of progression as you play the game. Much of this isn't new because we knew Blizzard was going to make new Overwatch games with different formats, and Kutaku had already leaked a lot of this many months ago, just more and more details come out. It's really only Metro that goes back and forth about whether or not the sequel will replace the original or be separate to it. I think it makes the most sense that it's going to be separate because I think it offers a separate experience. And that will make even more sense if Metro's leak of Overwatch 1 going to free to play is to be confirmed, either at BlizzCon or near into the future. It seems like an incredibly obvious move for Overwatch 1 to take, and that might low-key be the biggest buff that if you are a current Overwatch fan, not really interested in the more casual modes, but want to see the competitive multiplayer of Overwatch 1 get improved. 
free to play brings in a ton of new players and a ton of new revenue potentially into the loot box system. And I'd say that would make it easier for Blizzard to pay more attention to it not less. Not to mention, according to Metro from the other video, it's expected that the Overwatch League will still maintain on the competitive client of Overwatch 1 all the maps and everything that we expect, but now adding a new competitive game mode called Rush, which more than likely is the tug of war payload mode, which should more or less play out as the control maps that we have now. That's a single objective that both teams fight for, but I think they'll be much more stalemating unless there's objective breakpoints and little checkpoints for you to push to. Otherwise, I foresee it being quite the objective stall fest, depending on how the scoring goes. Because if it works anything similar to how Splatoon 2 does it, there's two ways to win. You either push it all the way to the opponent's base and then win, or it marks the farthest you get it. And at that point, the enemy has to beat that distance. But sort of like we've seen in the capture the flag mode in Overwatch, turtling up and playing super defensively when you have a lead might be something that works in this mode. And I don't think players are necessarily going to like that which is why I like the idea of two payloads because having multiple objectives splits the attention and forces you to pull resources in other directions. And that's a concept that isn't in any current Overwatch game mode, which is part of the reason why there is such stale metas in my opinion, because Overwatch has very simplistic, straightforward formats. And the benefit of that is it's supposed to be more user-friendly, but I think we all know that there's nothing user-friendly about the Assault game mode, for example, and I may talk about this more in future videos about formats and game modes and the hardcore direction Overwatch 1 probably should take if they want to keep it being competitive in the marketplace of FPS games with more and more coming out, but we'll leave that there for now. The best news for Overwatch 1 fans, I think, is that with free to play, not only do we get a new burst of energy of new players, there very likely is other systems changes coming along with it. I don't know what that entails, but I think you can look to other Blizzard games and how they differ to Overwatch now, or even like StarCraft went free to play last year, I believe, how they tried to rework how some of the modes and things were distributed in that. We don't know if this is going to get announced at BlizzCon. It seems a little early right after the Switch gets released, so I kind of doubt it and think we're going to hear about that closer to when Overwatch 2 releases, which is expected to be early first quarter of 2020. And if there's a playable version of it on the show floor at BlizzCon, there may even be a beta for Overwatch 2, like immediately, I don't know, the day of or January even. The beta period of Overwatch 1, I seem to remember lasted a couple months, so we could see a beta for Overwatch 2 as early as January. It was originally announced that there'd be no new hero at BlizzCon, then it seems like Echo would be announced, but it's unsure what games in what capacity, and even what Overwatch's 2 release schedule and update schedule is going to look like, even if there is one. And I'd say that there's only limited time at BlizzCon and they don't want to crowd the space and burn all of their plays at once. I think they'll either release Echo in between Overwatch 2's release or alongside with it, kind of setting a new tempo for hero releases in Overwatch 1. But I think a lot of us really want that new hero now because whenever we get a new hero added to the game there's a rotation of attention that overwatch gets with new balancing and work they put into it i think we're all a little bit worried that overwatch one is going to remain a bit neglected or worked on too slowly in lieu of getting the sequel ready but to some degree i think it's fair to expect that most of that work's probably already done so with any luck improvements to overwatch one can still be made crazy stuff we covered a ton of things in today's video let me know your thoughts on on any of this in the comment section down below if you enjoyed it please be sure to leave the video a like it really does help us out let us know that you're enjoying the content and if you haven't already please subscribe and be sure to hit the bell icon so that you actually get notified when our videos go live link to the description is our twitter where we tweet out news updates and dank memes that's been it for me i've been frito for your overwatch we'll see you guys next time